speaking and pronunciation again I'm your host Keith Brooks and we're gonna be talking about speaking and pronunciation in this lecture because when you take your praxis test or your teaching you'll need to know how a person pronunciates the words and correct those through speech patterns like tongue lip positions during your praxis test you're going to hear people speaking and they're going to say what was the problem in this lecture I hope that you will understand where the errors are coming from and you'll be able to understand how to fix it so when you hear the person speak you'll know where the error is it's known as voice articulation and when people speak they create sounds and these sounds are demonstrate words and meaning through the mouth and nasal cavities the way people use these are through vowels, diphthongs, semivowels, nasals, and it comes from the larynx, the voice box, lips and tongues, and nasal cavity. As a teacher, you should understand these because the basic anatomy, the sound pronunciation, and the tongue placements are problems for some students. Like in China, they don't have the TH sound. Instead, they're, they're going to put their bottom lip through their teeth and make a as an F sound just so they can compensate because they've never heard it and they don't know how to make it. By doing this you'll find remedies for those problems and seek additional intervention. I remember one time in Cambodia a new teacher he had only been teaching maybe two months and he's saying that some of the students need speech pathologists. No they needed someone to do this what I'm going to teach you now. And you may need individual curriculum and you may need to go out and get additional resources to help students. Like I had a Chinese student and she kept using the F sound or the TH sound. And I actually made her hold the bottom lip and stick her tongue between the teeth in order to compensate so she would understand that's how you do it. What happens is a lot of students come to the United States, they have culture shock. They're unable to speak fluently because they, some might be in a monolingual society like China or Cambodia where they only speak one language outside of the classroom. And so when they do this, they're deemed learning disabled and they're put back two, three classes. Even though they, they're up to par with math and science, they're put back because the, they can't speak English. I had a Chinese student in Saipan who spoke Chinese he didn't speak any English and they wanted to put him in first grade and he was a fourth grade student so basically I s took him to the side and I gave him a math test and he passed the math test and I gave him a small visual science test and he was able to pass that just for, by looking so when you do this you're actually going to cause problems with the students some students may actually be afraid to speak because there's sounds that in English that are not in other languages I think Spanish has like six or eight vowels and sometimes they reverse the sounds similar to Tagalog so what you need to do is have students listen and when they listen they start to hear the sound and the flowing it's going to be very fast for them they need to listen and speak a lot in order to get the pronunciation down and they need to be accepted by the class and when they get accepted the student speaks more and they're they're willing to talk more and one thing that I found was students actually learn more on the playground than they will up in the classroom and like they said the Chinese student I had in Saipan didn't want to associate with any students until he found like 10 or 15 phrases where he was able to communicate with his classmates and as soon as he did and knew their names they all invited him to play games outside during recess and within six months he was almost mainstreamed where he could pick, he learned enough English where he could actually be in the class without me what you want to do is stop bad speech habits so you need to start early and understand the characteristics of speech by doing this uh, you will f stop the bad speech habits uh, you may want to not correct the student in front of the classroom but take him to the side maybe at recess or talk to the parents and say you'll give them extra help this way the student knows that you're going to help them with their pronunciation and then make sure you tell the student that you are going to correct their pronunciation because you're going to help them because sometimes they may take it as an insult if you're always trying to correct them but if you sit there and you say I'm don't take it the wrong way when I correct you I'm just trying to help you improve your English and a lot of times they'll be very happy and a lot of times it's just not the pronunciation it's the word order phrases they use 
which helps them gain the confidence of speaking. And when they understand that and know you're willing to help, they're willing to learn. In future lectures, we're going to talk about the voicing, places of articulation, the manner of articulation, the phonetic features that do not distinguish phonemes, vowels, consonants, aspirated, non-aspirated, stress, and syllabic sounds.